this semester you're going to be doing a lot of this work online and all the lessons that I'm going to give you are via video so you can rewatch them as you wish. They'll be opening up every week. Now in a normal class you'd uh, sit in class with me, you'd get to know me and all that sort of stuff but since this is all video I wanted to take a moment so you could put a face to the voice that you're going to be listening to and you know who you're going to come and talk to if you need help with anything at all. So my name is Dr. Adrian Brundage. I'm a forensic entomologist and a scientist. I write a lot of papers. I'm uh, the editor-in-chief for several journals, including the uh, Journal of Forensic Science Education and the Journal of uh, Forensic Entomology, among a few others, and in stars here, of course. So I'm going to do my best to teach you what I've learned over the many, many years that I have uh, tried to do scientific writing. If you remember back to the uh, introduction to InSTARS video, um, I said that the reason I set up this course was to make sure that you understood how to do scientific writing and that you didn't get your uh, uh, butt kicked a little bit by your advisors or by editors later on. I am coming from a place of experience with that. So when I took scientific writing in my undergraduate uh, courses in my undergraduate uh, education, they didn't actually have a scientific writer teach it. Instead, they had an English professor and we read um, Frankenstein and wrote essays. So then when I went on to my master's, I tried to write the best way that I knew how, which was in an English way, you know, like a, uh, a basic essay or a basic English dissertation. And man, my advisor hated that. And so I got uh, put through the ringer for a couple of years trying to figure out how to write in a scientific format. So I spent my time going through a bunch of books and videos and, and just trying to find the information myself and trying and failing and trying and failing. So I'm trying to uh, have you skip that several years of pain and learn what we expect when we're doing scientific writing. Uh, so that is where I'm coming from when I give you uh, my advice or when I grade you or things of that nature. I've been through it and it's a pain in the butt. I am now uh, acting as subject editor for the Journal of, um, of uh, Medical Entomology and um, my specific area of expertise is forensic entomology. So whenever we get a forensic entomology uh, publication sent in, uh, it gets sent to me as the subject editor. I go through, do a bunch of editing, do a bunch of peer reviewing, choose the peer reviewers and all that sort of stuff. So I'm trying to set this up so that you know exactly how to do scientific writing and hopefully you'll have a good example of your scientific writing once you finish this course, which you can then use to show off your writing to potential employers or advisors or whatever else. And in a perfect world, your final paper will get chosen for publication next year, which means you'll actually have a publication under your belt. Okay, so before we get started, though, let's put a face to a, a voice, shall we? So this is me. Once again, my name is Dr. Adrian Brundage. Here I am in Ecuador. Uh, I'm the uh, faculty advisor for Alternative Spring Break. This was our trip last year or so, uh, where we went to Ecuador to work with school children to help them learn English from native English speakers. Uh, I'm also a forensic entomologist. So I do a lot of training in how to collect insects from dead bodies. Here I am doing a my summer workshop at the body farm at Texas State University where I was teaching a bunch of law enforcement professionals and uh, forensic students how to collect insects and do a time of colonization estimation. Um, just a view from my house. How pretty is that? Here's my office. If you want to come and speak with me uh, in person, my office is uh, on West Campus in the Mini Bell Heat Building. You can get the exact location uh, on Canvas. Uh, so you can come and visit me at any point when my door is open. Uh, and here I am pretending to take an online class. I'm actually enrolled in this online class right there. So of course, I'm super listening by playing Fallout and uh, Animal Crossing at the same time. It was a really boring lecture. All right, so this is me. Now you know what I look like in case you run into me on campus. 
Uh, I also run a, a couple of study abroads and I travel a lot when it's not a year of pandemic. Uh, so here I am several years ago in London. Uh, this was my study abroad crew in Trinidad. We run this every single year. Uh, the London one is my study abroad when we go to the UK, uh, specifically Lincoln. That's our lab forensic study abroad. This Trinidad study abroad is uh, for field research. Uh, here I am in Malaysia doing one of those fish pedicure things because it was awesome. And here I am in Costa Rica hanging out with my new snake buddy. And they had these... Um, berries that people used to use as lipstick and one of my students decided to go around to everybody and do the Simba Simba uh, marking on its forehead so good times if you want to travel with me there's plenty of opportunities it's super fun I do enjoy traveling quite a bit now I am married this is my husband Dean he is the uh, part owner of Zeitman's Grocery in downtown Bryan uh, we also started the New Republic Brewing Company many years ago and then sold that so we could start the grocery um I'm introducing you to Dean because I've provided for you a whole bunch of video lessons that you'll be able to listen to throughout the course of the class. Now, I record these lessons at home. I have this super high-tech studio. It's it's my closet. I just sit in my closet with, with a video camera and my microphone. Super high-tech. Uh, and uh, since I spent a lot of time in there recording these lessons, uh, when Dean comes home, he works long hours, but when he comes home, sometimes he'll come home right in the middle of me recording. And you might hear him come in at some point, yell hello faintly in the background, something like that. And I think once he just scares the ever-living crap out of me. So I'm recording these lectures and he snuck in, very quietly opened the door and kissed me on the top of my head and I, I screamed. It was terrifying. So I think I cut out all the screams, but you might be able to hear me sort of start to scream. So since you might hear him come in, I wanted to know who you were hearing. I wanted you to know who you were hearing there. So here he is. Um, the He'll be in downtown Brian most of the time if you ever want to go say hi. Now, I do have three cats and... Um, I have uh, two dogs, so I've got a lot of animals. Um, so that uh, handsome, beautiful kitten right here, um, this is one that you will hear in the background. He he decided he wanted to become feral, so that's pretty great. He, he So I don't really count him among my uh, cats. He's our old boy. He's 15 years old. He moved in with the feral cat colony that the nice neighbor next door manages. But every once in a while, you'll hear him in the background just screaming because he's a big talker. Uh, he's not hurt or anything. He's just annoyed that it's raining or snowing or too hot or whatever. He's just an old man. Uh, this is the newest kitten. This is Cricket. So Cricket, I adopted... Um, about a year ago, she was a result because I was working a nasty case. I work a lot of casework when it comes to animals. I do a lot of pro bono work for the ASPCA. Uh, I worked a really nasty case where there was a backyard breeding uh, situation for dogs. And the people just let a bunch of dogs starve to death in kennels. Uh, I had to work that case and uh, make sure those people got jail time, which they did because that is animal cruelty and wrong. But sometimes these cases super upset me. And so this particular case was really, really bad. And I was so upset that I went and adopted a kitten because I was going to save somebody. Dang it. So yeah, that's that's Cricket. That's how she came to be. Uh, she's adorable and kind of a diva. So you might hear her wandering in or scratching at the door or biting my feet. There's one point during the uh, lessons when she was hiding up top of my closet and I didn't notice. And she was there for a good hour, hour and a half before she decided to jump on me in the middle of me talking. That, was, again, was terrifying. Uh, so you might hear me scream about that or hear, uh, hear me try to talk through when she's attacking my hand or my foot she wanted to play whatever this here is mew uh mew is uh, an adopted kitten that we got uh, when his owner decided to move back to london and was just going to give him up so we kept him uh you can see mew and cricket um, cuddling right there mew does not like a closed door so you might hear some scratching in the background or something of that nature that's him trying to get in or tell me to open the door to the closet to my recording studio finally this is hobo we found him when he was just a couple of weeks old uh, out in the middle of nowhere he'd been abandoned by his mom he had a big old broken tail and was starving and all that sort of stuff so we brought him in and here he is discovering the christmas tree for the first time very exciting here he is eating fish food because he's weird. He also likes hanging out in the rain. 
I don't know about him. Now, the uh, other couple of things that I have are my dogs. These are my babies. These are my hearts. Uh, so these two were dumped with their mom and the rest of their litter mates on the side of a highway uh, a couple of years back. And uh, I adopted these two. Uh, the one with the eye patch is Captain Hook. Uh, he's got an eye patch. And he's got little spots on his ears, earrings. And he's also very, very adventurous. And he loves getting into trouble. So he's a pirate. Uh, the second one, this is TikTok. Now he's named TikTok because TikTok is the name of that uh, crocodile that always follows Captain Hook around in the stories. And TikTok will follow Captain Hook around. TikTok is a homebody. He just wants to be loved. And uh, he just wants to eat. That's pretty much it. So every once in a while you'll hear barking in the background. Or a jingle of tags or something like that. It's one of these two. Um, they are... Oh, they're my babies. So these are all my animals. Now I've done my best to edit out some of the major interruptions that they uh, might have had during when I was talking to you, but there's no guarantee that you won't hear them in the background. So if you hear barking or you hear jingling or you hear me sort of get a little distracted, uh, Captain Hook especially likes uh, hanging out outside and staring at me through windows if I'm not paying enough attention to him. So you might hear that. So this is what you're hearing. My cats and my dogs, everything like that. I mean, look how adorable they were. Oh, they're still adorable. Look at them. Dear Lord. Okay. So just so you uh, know what's going on in the background, that's that. So that's a little bit about me. Now you can put a face to a voice and a face to all the meows and scratches and barks and stuff that you hear in the background. And we'll get to know each other pretty well this semester. Here's to a great semester. Let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>